Whirly bird, the whirly bird of death. Oh, is that what you got? Yeah, but I think it's just a building one, not a dying one. Okay, I think we are live. Oh, sorry, we are learn to trade live and free, as it uh, turns out. And yep, I got a screen up. I awesome. have no sound up. Bloody beautiful. How are you doing, Ash? <laughs> I'm doing all right, mate. Yeah, I'm doing okay. Just, What's going uh, on, buddy? You're well, in Sydney, Singapore. We're sweating your yeah, ass well, off, I'm sure. I, yeah, Janine, it's a bit too hot for me, I have to say. I, I, uh, I, it was quite nice to get out of the UK because the UK is getting a little bit cold. But uh, by the same token, this is not the desired option for me <laughs> weather-wise. Out just, of the fridge into the oven. That, that's what it's a bit like. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, uh, I was in the Caribbean about two months ago, and it's probably equally as hot, but it's dry. So the yeah, heat is difference. dry. Yeah, huge, huge. It's amazing how different heat can be, really. But... Uh, yeah, it's just uh, just a little bit too much for my taste. Righto, should we take a look and see what's on today in terms of news events? Maybe we should do that. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I mean, I've <clears throat> yeah, there's there's there are trades that are possible with uh, with the FTSE, but it's going to be uh, with a huge air of caution. You know, it, it, it we're we're still on for a long. Uh, and I can show you that before we start the show, if you like, just uh, yeah, before okay. we, be yeah, not yeah. before we start the show, before we kick off. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Just because, um, how can I do this now? We, 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 we had a bit of a problem with this last time, didn't we? <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Let's share. Oh, I can't because you're, uh, you can't? you're right. currently so if sharing. I, uh, if I went stop share then what happened was I killed myself. Okay, so let me see if I can do this. See if this works. I can do it when you're hosting. I don't, I don't know how. Right, Actually, just you make it all, oh, hang on. All I've got to do is approve, I think. Great. So we're there, are we? I think so. We should be. It depends. I'm trying to watch off air and I've got a weird thing going on there as well on YouTube. No, we're still on your screen. Now, why can't I seem to. Where's my. Okay, so maybe that's not the way because I can't seem to grab it. All right, just hang on two secs and I no will problem. see what I can do. Um, do you do you stop sharing? Do you? I just haven't got a share. I haven't got the option for some reason. No, when you when you. Um... No, no, don't know why it seems to go straight to you. In really stop recording. Do, 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 do. Oh, hold on. Hold on. This should work. Oh, no. I can't. No, I can't share screen while other participant is sharing. Yeah, you need to stop for some reason. I don't get that message. That's weird, eh? Yeah, it is strange. Right. If, I <laughs> if I stop share, you'll probably be on your own for a while. But No problem. Uh, I'll try and come back. That's fine, mate. All righty. Uh, see you later. I'll see you in a bit. Okay. So, let's do this. Now, what we have here is a FTSE 100 that, that was just opened up. And, I, and there is a long, you know, there is a long in this market for sure. Um, and it's probably above this bar. But, you know, you know Brexit is, is playing havoc, really, with these markets, as we found yesterday. So uh, I'm not that keen on it, even if it comes down here. Th this is another really good, good area, actually, for a long. So coming down, at, uh, you know, five or six pips. Well, I might take this on, but it's 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 problematic because we have um, just so much toing and froing, you know. When it comes down to the DUP, um, which is the uh, the the other party in in Parliament that uh, that is giving uh, Boris Johnson's clan um, some kind of prop up, it's making it very very difficult. Now we're looking at the pound, and the pound has weakened somewhat because there were reports that the DUP were not going to allow uh, the Brexit deal to go through. So this helps us really with a FTSE. 
Now, because it's coming down here, yes, the daily pivot is a, is a, a, a one option. I think I'd prefer the low of this bar just to kind of, um, you know, just maybe be a little bit safer on the bounce. But um, let's have a quick look around the grounds and see if uh, if we can promote this trade. We, we'll probably take it above here. I, I personally think a safer place is probably on this point. And the reason I say that is that if it breaks down, we can probably get out. Um but uh, but as I say, yesterday really showed me that uh, this is going to be a tough trade. And and even though I like this for, for some upside from this point, I don't like the state of the market. I don't like the 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 the, the frame of mind, if you like, that the market is in. So um, you know this uh, this this trade may well just fluctuate between these two zones without uh, without anything specific. Looking around the uh, the grounds at some barometers, S and P is looking a little bit weaker. This is a 15 minute chart, but if we bring it up on the on the hourly, uh, it's right on support, so it could you know it could still catch a bid here and, and move to the upside. So it's not it's not awful. Um, a lackluster day yesterday, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. Geez, yesterday was uh, was tough. I, I actually, you know, I. And, and this is a difficult one because what I said yesterday was we were trying to get into the long yesterday and uh, and I did take a long in this area. But I did also say that if it start, if the market starts to break down, then we do want to, uh, to take on the short. And I took a short on the weekly pivot in the end. Um, and the reason that this area was the bounce zone was because when we look at the four hour chart, there's a little trend line that um, that comes from here, actually, it's this point here. There's the trend line on the four hour chart. And, and, you know, this this is really the start of the trend. This is a little holding area, but the start of the trends here. So there's a little pattern along here. Uh, I'm not sure whether we get a channel, but let's have a look. Yeah, you can see that. So there's there's a little channel there, which is why why the market was uh, was was able to to have something of, uh, of a bounce at that particular point. But it's testing uh, back back at the lows again. <clears throat> not not testing uh, these lows just yet, but it's testing this low here. Um, probably will test this low here. It's not hugely suggestive to me that this is going to break through. So yes, there's a long here, but this is now in a downtrend. You know, this is an hourly downtrend. I just don't really trust the the, uh, the trend to the downside, um, even though um, there is some weakness out there. There's some there's some uh, worry and tension. So I'm I'm just a bit concerned about getting run over, mate. And and I have to say. Paul was talking to me about this uh, a few days ago and we were talking about the pound and he was saying, you know, he's, he was kind of reluctant. Uh, to, well, he, was, he wasn't sure whether he should close the accounts for uh, the weekend because of Brexit or not. Uh, and I said, the problem with it is if you leave it open for people and they get caught on the wrong side, it can really affect your psychology because it's an unusual market and it's an unusual event. And it's a, there's a lot, there's, 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 there's much simpler markets out there to trade. Um, and I think this is just going to be one of those that you just sort of say, if it goes there and bounces to the upside and you call it, you accept it. If it comes down here, you call it to the upside and it goes, you accept it. Um, because I just don't like the market. I don't, I don't like uh, how um, it has fluctuated. This trade on the, on the previous day um, obviously was, uh, was the first uh, problem for me because I was I was looking for it to come up to this level that didn't happen and, and we would have got taken out fairly swiftly yes there was another opportunity later in the day as this at uh, this point bounce and there was a little um there was a little five minute um uh, setup which I will show you look at this five minute setup it's pretty clean there's this is a weekly pivot there it comes down it comes down it retests giving us some weakness in this bar indecisive bar first bar was probably um you know a, an area that i uh, i entered on and then the next bar was indecisive and then we just start to kind of like uh, cat uh, uh, waterfall to the downside i thought you so, might have liked that bar just the there we'll, we'll back 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 it's kind of a spinning top that you don't like to trade i know uh, this one here bought about 10 candles one two three four Oh, this one here. No, next one down. Next, next swing. This one that here. One. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would have traded that as well. I was already in by that time. Um, but yes, I, I would have liked that. I liked that. Do you know what this told me is that um, I was probably okay. I probably, I might, my trade was probably okay. So when it when it came down here and gave me this um, this particular bar, then then I was okay just to let it go. Um, and I actually came out a little bit early. I didn't get the low. And the reason I didn't get the low is that I was looking at this other pattern along here. Um, 
I was looking at this and thinking that uh, that we might have, uh, have already hit the low. So I came out uh, just a little bit below that point. As I saw that this coming back up again, I came I came out in this area. So I didn't quite grab the lowest, uh, the lowest pips there. But this is also a channel. Um, and that was a little bit concerning to me. But you can see that there's a lot of lines on this chart. And, and it, it is getting... It's just a bit confusing, isn't it, mate? It's starting to look a little bit kind of like a uh, some sort of uh, drunk person trying to do a sewing pattern. Yeah, so it's I, a spider's web. When I see yeah. that, I, I yeah. think to myself exactly the same as you're thinking. I, I'd have got yeah. no right to be in this market right now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and... Um, the, there's just a headline the DUP is rejecting the Brexit deal as it stands so that should actually be good for the FTSE which is why the longs are a much a much more attractive because that you know that uh, that should potentially weaken the pound and when we come to the pound then uh, this this is probably a better trade in in some respects rather than the FTSE this is probably a, a short under this bar um, on the pound it's uh, at one spot uh, 2753 there's probably a short down there with uh, with stops in in this area here um but uh but it just depends on whether you you know feel comfortable trading the pound right now because it, it didn't seem to matter that uh, that that talks were breaking down because you know we we broke down a little bit yesterday but then started to move back to the upside same could happen today but uh, but by all accounts it doesn't uh, appear to me like that's likely to happen i think uh, short um, shorts in the pound are probably a little bit easier in some respects than the FTSE, but get be very very careful because this one really is vicious and, and pretty volatile. Um, so if you're going to trade it, then uh, I would suggest being out by tomorrow at the very latest. Um, and well, the other I think thing is, if if you're trading ATW accounts, you've got to be out anyway. You've got to be out anyway. So yeah, so you're probably you're probably looking at a little scalp, really. Um, you know, maybe down to the weekly pivot if it, if it'll get there by the end of the day. If it doesn't, then I would just close it out. Uh, but the, but you know, we're looking we're looking ac around the grounds. The uh, the Dow Jones is starting to look like it's under some pressure here uh, with the daily and weekly pivot uh, lining up. Uh, you you've got a term for this which I can't remember, but uh, but that's that's lining up. Um, and prices under both of them. So that's looking under stress. S&P looks a little under stress. It's, it's kind of like in a, uh, in a bit of a holding pattern, but it's, um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not looking like it's going to go through these, um, these all-time highs at this particular stage. Uh, is this an all-time high? It's pretty close. Not quite, not quite the all-time highs. It's got a little bit, little bit more room there to go. Um, but that's looking under stress. Nasdaq is uh, not too bad, actually. Actually, it doesn't it looks okay for some upside, I suppose. If if you were kind of drawing a trend line along this point, it looks like it may well be above that. But it's probably got to retest the daily pivot, so that could be a little bit under stress when we consider that currently um you know we got this this bar here which is giving us a low i don't know how clear this is actually for people but you can see that there is there is a bar here this spinning top just tells us there's a bit of indecision so this could fall one you know either way right now looks like it, it might be moving uh, slightly more positive if we check out the vix uh the vix is is not really kind of giving us uh, any massive uh, clear indication right now looks looks pretty restful so i suppose upside could well be on uh the cac are on as well is probably a little bit under stress. The price is under the daily pivot. And uh, just just a quick check on the DAX. The DAX looks like it's pushing for a little bit of upside and uh, and checking gold. Gold under stress doesn't really promote uh, any huge uh, potential upside for the market either. Um, sorry, gold under stress does does suggest that they, they, there is some upside uh, in the market. So we've got a little bit of a mixed picture. But the mixed picture is probably just about weighted to the upside rather than the downside. So I think if you're going to take anything, you're looking at a long FTSE and you're looking at a short pound. But um, I am finding it very difficult to call this one, mate, if I'm uh, if I'm completely honest. And and I, I think because, oh, actually this looks OK, doesn't it? It looks all right for a, for a long. Well, that looks pretty good for a long, but I, but as I say, I'm reticent. I'm reticent to trade it. So because I'm reticent to trade it, it's it's making it tough for me to call as well. Um, I wouldn't want to kind of lead people into the, into a, a similar scenario as yesterday, which is probably not going to happen. To be fair, I think that you know the market looks like it's actually okay, but I think all we're probably looking at is, is uh, bouncing off ranges to the upside and the downside, possibly until next week. So um, Ooh, I sounds think sounds like I should be trading the FTSE then. 
Yeah, I think you'd be okay, mate. I, th- I think it, it could be a it could be a pretty good day for you. With, with if you think of uh, maybe the FTSE and um, possibly the pound, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think indices uh, could be a a pretty good call today. But yeah, the FTSE looks all right, doesn't it? If it comes back uh, on your fifteen, I oh know it's fifteen. What was the previous chart? Five minute chart. Yeah, this five minute chart. If it comes yeah, back if it back comes here, back there now. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, could happen. Could happen. It looks all right though, doesn't it? It doesn't look uh, doesn't look like the worst um the worst trade in the world and uh, it doesn't look like the worst price action in the world. Um and and some of the reason for that as well. The, the other reason I say that is that I am considering the big picture. And even though my monthly chart looks uh, a little bit under stress and and you know I think longer term we're looking for some shorts. I think the weekly chart is also a little bit under stress. But when we flip to the dailies, the dailies are really in a very very questionable but um but uh um uh, not obvious what's the word um i i think digestible uptrend maybe maybe that's the best way to put it we do have a a base down here looks like we've created a higher high looks like this could well be a higher low it's probably going to put in a bar which would suggest um that friday's the day to trade it but Again, you know, look, think about Brexit over the weekend. We, we, we've got uh, effectively the 19th is, is the time that if Boris Johnson does not get a deal by the 19th, which is in uh, two days time, then uh, then the Ben Act comes into play. And the Ben Act is that he has to ask for an extension. So uh, so I think given that um, it's making this weekend a pretty tricky time to uh, to be walking into. And I think the question is, it, you know, we, we won't be able to hold over the weekend. I just don't think it's going to be wise to do that. And the question is, can you get enough profit in your pocket? In the meantime, yeah. In the meantime, yeah, but by by uh, by Friday. And, and I think you probably could, but um, but I'm just not that keen. And, and, you know, one of the reasons I'm not that keen is that it's just not necessary. You know, this is it's completely unnecessary trading environment, um, uh, you know, if, from my perspective, you um, Calling it to the upside is is one thing, but uh, but needing to trade it to the upside um, is another. Because what we could find is on um, on uh, on on Monday um, we might actually find that uh, that we have something which does something like this. You know, we might we might have that. I don't know why uh, why that's not. Um... That's not full, but uh, we might have that where where this um, this actually has given us you know by uh, by by Monday it might might well be well and truly up again because as I say this is this is starting to move to the upside it is trending higher there's probably going to be people that are quite happy to trade this on Friday and on Monday there may well be a gap uh, to the upside and and that's going to come down to whether Brexit um, is like to happen um, and that will be you know will it be sickening to miss it. I don't think it will. I think uh, that there's, well, there's just another day, mate. It's just there. another day. Yeah, it's just another day. And I think with these with these kind of um, um, I, I want to use the word uh, anomaly, but uh, I can't think of uh, of how it would be put in the right tense. But uh, uh, the, the you know the, the the market is in a bit of an anomaly right now. So uh, and, and with these um, analomic events, I wish that was a word that I could use, but it's made up. <laughs> then, uh, then uh, it just it seems I'm, a bit pointless. I'm just to me. going through the Funk and Wagner here at the moment. It's not there. <laughs> um, so that's that's really it for me, mate. I, I would suggest that if anybody wants to trade the FTSE, they sit on their hands for the day. That that would be my personal advice. I think I just don't see this as a necessary market to trade. I think we've got much easier opportunities next week. Um, and they will be plentiful. So um, so I, I just think, leave it alone. All right, mate, happy days. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Let me see if I can find something on the currency charts that might, oh, that doesn't look like a currency chart. Uh, maybe that does. Oh, okay. It does look like a currency chart. It's the euro dollar, as a matter of fact. I said this morning that um, my screen sharing is paused. I think I can see my screen. So it must yeah, be your, your screen's there, yeah. Right. Um, I said this morning, and I haven't um, haven't really been a bull of the euro, still not, but it's starting to look that way. 
I'd have to say. And um, I go back to the weekly chart as I do often. And that candle there was still the Vogue for me until we got back into this range. I call it a range. Let me call it a channel, if you like. And also let me get rid of these targets because they don't need to be there right now. Uh, but we have now come back through the top of the horizontal range or the rectangle, but significantly back into the channel. Now, whether that's sustainable or otherwise is yet to be seen, of course. I won't trust that. Until... Is the, um, I, I see a really a, a cracking opportunity on this one um, right. that, that happened, you know, two days ago. Um, and it's a test. Yes. Stop the you know it's a breakout of the of the downward channel. Yeah, is that enough of a test for you, or do you think this comes back one more time? I mean, the other thing that that is is being suggested to me is that we haven't really had a an accumulation pattern to, to kind of speak about. You know, there's no there's no um, the suggestion to me that we come down at least to the weekly pivot one more time. Um, and well, we are at resistance here, right? I mean, this this is are, this is yeah. a a potential points where uh, where this could actually fail, um, but I I don't think it I think it might be a buy the dip kind of scenario with this one right now. I've got two things, and one of them is the top of the range, which is currently where we are at this resistance level, but there's another one just above it, right about there, and. And it also coincides with the top of this channel. So I'm thinking that maybe there is a bit more upside back to 111.50. And at that point, I'd be looking for it to come back and, and retest this uh, or the top of the bo top of the bottom of the range, if you like. Oh, I haven't got your, your mouse moving on the screen. I don't know if that's the same for everybody. Okay. It says my screen sharing is paused. Let me see if I can fix that. Uh, resume share. That's better. Should have a mouse now. Okay, cool. So, um, yes, this is this is the level I think that maybe if uh, if I'm in a long here, I'd be thinking of getting out of the long at that point and then yeah. looking for the retrace back to here at least or the resumption of the trend. So, yeah, at the moment I can see the the case for the bulls. I, I could actually see the case for the bulls on Monday, but I chose to ignore it really uh, and it, it was all about this trend line here with this close above that trend line it was kind of indicator that uh, we were in for some upside and of course that was the case after we hit the top of the range we came straight back, straight back to the bottom and now we're seeking the top of this channel, but we're at the top of the horizontal range or the rectangle, if you like. So I'm always going to be looking for short here. Um, even today, you know, we've got an untested daily pivot. So I'll be looking on a smaller time frame, say hourly 30 minute, for uh, maybe a breakout to the high side. I'll put a little trade line in here that'll help us. If we were to break that and consolidate above it, get back below it and retest it, then there's a short on. Uh, at this point in time, I can't do anything though. We are yeah. still, still above the range. Uh, we've got to come back inside it. So another option would be price to come back below the daily pivot, retest it and the bottom and the top of the range, if you like, give me a higher low, sorry, a lower high in here somewhere or even in here somewhere. And that would be a signal to go short as well. It's a question of whether I'm willing to go short or not. And my bias says short, but uh, I can see, as I said from the outset, the potential for this to go right up to here, up to 111.50, which is about you know, 70, 80 pips away from where we are now. Yeah. Uh, that's the quandary I've got with Euro dollar today. I'm not 100% sure whether we're going to here first, then back, or we're going to here and then maybe long. I don't know. It's, it's a tough call. Yeah. So until I see that unfold, um, I, like you, will be sitting on my hands on this cross. I won't be guessing. I'll be just waiting for price to tell me what it's going to do. 
Yeah, and I, and I wonder how much Brexit is affecting the euro as well. I mean, it's, it's a possibility. Well, it has to be, doesn't it? Yes, it's, yeah. It's no question, it has to be. It's part um, of the story, isn't it? It is very much part of the story. But then on on the flip side of that, and on the flip side of the pound as well, is you know, we can't ignore what the dollar's doing also. And you know, the dollar index has been suffering, but looking to rally. Um, I don't know what's going on with trade wars, what that's going to do to the dollar. So, you know, there's a fair bit to think about. Yes. Well, there's, there is, uh, there are things going on with the trade wars. There was um, uh, the Chinese were talking about retaliation of, uh, from America's stance um, about um, where their, their position on Hong Kong. And that was yesterday. Um, I think that was, uh, that was announced. So uh, they haven't cleared up, but then Donald Trump's come out and said that they should have something signed in November. So they, you know, even that is, is kind of uncertain. We just seem to be going through one of those months, mate, you know, as, as we, we, we're almost reaching the, um, uh, what, what, what would you call it when you, when you get to the, the edges of the triangle? The edges of the triangle. Yeah. You know, when, when it, just before it breaks out, when you get sort of like the, the, the right at the points of the triangle. Oh, I call that the toothpaste in the toothpaste end. Yeah. We're getting very close to the toothpaste <laughs> end. where the toothpaste shoots out. Yes. That's, that's where we're with, with, with all of this stuff, you know, um, trade wars are meant to be signed in, uh, sorry, trade uh, deals are meant to be signed in uh, early November. Brexit's meant to be signed by uh, the 31st of, um, um, of October. I know you were just about to check the news. The Fed is out at the end of October. I just think we, 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 we've picked a tough month, you know. Um, Bali's going to be interesting. Jeez, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be one of those, isn't it, that you either choose to kind of uh, ride it out and, you know, pick a position and ride it out, or uh, we're going to be in and out of things pretty, pretty swiftly, I would, uh, I would have thought. Well, I think that's the, that's the counsel for me, and the in and out part is peculiar, not to me at all, because that's exactly what I like to do. I mean, yeah. yesterday's trade that we took last last night in the show was um, a case in point, and we'll get to that in a minute, I suppose. But um, I, I'm always always doing the same thing. I'm always looking to trade top of ranges to bottom of ranges, and vice versa. So this this kind of suits me. This this scenario, yeah. I'm more than happy with it because of the volatility that you see. You're often coming from. A, a resistance level to a support level and it happens very quickly and then it reverses you know it's it's very much a whipsaw uh, kind of scenario and that's fine as long as it's bouncing off support or resistance then you've got a chance if it's bouncing for no apparent reason then you've got an issue yeah but if you've got those support and resistance areas to uh, to support you pardon the alliteration uh, then you're right, you should be okay, and there you know there are signals. There there are things that are showing me, um, in particular Aussie, and I'll get. To, well, I might as well go to it now, yeah, because we noticed this yesterday, and we had, and this goes to. Was it Chandra's question yesterday about the trade lines? Yes, I think it was. Yeah. Yep. And this goes to, you know, changing your trade lines live and noticing what is happening and what can occur versus what has occurred. And I'll, I'll just review that because we had a trade line coming through. Actually, this was the base of it, I think. We had a trade line coming through here. No, we didn't. It was coming through here. That's right. That was the trade line yesterday, right? And Shandru correctly picked a stronger trade line, which was coming from here and going through these levels, uh, about there somewhere. But had you only had that trade line on your chart and not this one from prior, you could easily have missed this trade that we took. So let me just point that out. So get rid of that trade line. We've got nice frequency of tests. Love that. It's beautiful. Hate this. This is a congregation on the trade line that I don't don't like because that just adds confusion to the to the mix. What you would have been looking for here is this break that happened, the consolidation that happened, re-entry, but there's no retest. So you've got no real reason to trade that break, to trade that candle. But let's swap over 
and use the trade line that we used. And suddenly you've got the break, the consolidation, the re-entry, the retest, entry. So you catch that move. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the key. You've got to allow these lines to play out. And, and like you asked the question yesterday, Ash, how, when do, you, when do you sack the trade line? Will you sack the trade line if it hasn't set up the candle after it's broken the line twice? So if that hadn't have played out, that trade line becomes null and void. And guess what we do? We then go to here because it is now the best trade line on the chart without question, but it didn't produce a trade yet. Don't give it up because it could still produce one, although it's now been broken twice. So you've actually got to move it again, but I would move it to there. And now you've got a nice clean chart again. So until that breaks, it's still perfectly valid. And we are looking for, as I said yesterday, um, you've got to take profit here. And that's exactly where the candle stopped. You could take profit. There was a trade line coming through here as well. And I said, you had three options. You take profit here, here, or I think DR1 might've been pretty much where price is right now. There were your three options and look where that closed, bang on it. So they were your three options to get out of that trade. I got out of the trade and not till, not till this morning, of course, because we didn't get to there till this morning. We had a pause after we, and you could be absolutely forgiven for getting out at that point. Uh, I was asleep at the time, so I didn't. And we got a nice little bit of Aussie news this morning and that took us up to here, but that's get out time. That really is get out time. And that's exactly what I've done. And I'm now waiting, as I said, to play this one, two, three false breaks. Now, what I need to see for that to happen or for me to trade that is for this kind of scenario. Back into here. Hit some form of support, either there or there. Then peel back and retest either the top of the rectangle or this former resistance level. And at that point, if we put in a lower high, that's your trading back down to here. So you've got an entry here or here. Uh, actually, I wouldn't enter there because you're trading straight into the daily pivot without a, without profit because it's way too close. So you've got to hope for something that's a little bit further away or you've got to wait until it actually breaks one or the other. So that was that was plan A yesterday. Uh, it hasn't changed one little bit. It's exactly the same because I like this scenario. False break, false break, false break, perhaps hasn't become a false break yet. Of course, it go, could go to heaven. And if it goes there, then happy days. It's not going to worry me one little bit. So that's where I'm at, mate, with that one. Um, as I say, now out of the trade and happy to be out of the trade because it's done done exactly as we asked it to do. And that's all. We yeah, did. that was, yeah. yeah, it was well played, mate. It was, um, as you didn't work out too badly in the end for us yesterday, you know, if we were teaming up as we, as we do. Yeah, well, look, absolutely. Um, <laughs> there's nothing better than that. If, uh, if you can get both going, fantastic, awesome. But if, if one falters and the other one picks it up, then happy days. Yeah. You betcha. Oh, man, I'd love to I'd love to know what our profit lines are. Um, Be pretty good, eh? I think it should be. Yeah, it should be. should be pretty stellar. Last few weeks have been pretty good. Um, What else am I looking at? I was a... I was an Aussie CAD short fan. I suppose I still am. The, the only thing that concerns me a little bit is the <laughs> unemployment number. Or the uh, that came out on the Aussie today, and that was kind of reverting back to the previous month because we had a a five point three last month, and we've dropped to five point two this month. Not a great change, but any any time there's a movement in the unemployment rate, you'll see the currency react 
because it's such an important number. Um, I think I'm still bearish, but I want to have a look at oil first. Oil just can't move from where it is. It seems stuck. Yeah, it's a weird one, that as well, I think, considering it's what's going on. Three. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to make of it myself. It's a pretty strong base, you know, that it's formed at this, you know, 50, 51 level. Um, and on the on the back of that, you're probably looking at a higher low, but are you? You know, you <laughs> that's the question mark, is it? It's it's not a clear chart by any stretch. And that kind of tempers the uh, the appetite for the CAD long at the moment. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four hourly candles that have been bullish. It's time for a retrace on this. Uh, but I can't see where from. It again is a little bit tough. So I'm going to leave it. I, I can't see a trade forming there, but I can on the Aussie. Um, Aussie CAD. Not just yet, but I can see the potential for this to happen. And there hopefully will be a trade line coming through here. This has got to be a high for that to, to occur. Otherwise, the only thing I've got to go by is this one here. When I say the only thing, it's the only thing in the area I want one to be uh, because one of two things to happen here. One, we put in a higher low here. And if that's the case, I'm looking to trade it to the top of the range and probably the confluence area here. B, we maybe hit the weekly pivot or the monthly pivot and skyrocket down to this area. So I, I just want a signal that that's, or either of those is about to happen. And uh, the first thing, of course, um, should be the either formation or otherwise of a higher low. But my issue is at this point, I, that's the only trade line I've got to trade with. This may be, as I said, and if that's the case, that will make things a whole lot easier. So imagine that I have got a trade line coming through here. And if that's the case, two ways to play it, um, allow it to break, maybe even find the weekly pivot and go to plan B, which was to trade it short, but trade it short like this. I need another color for this pen, I don't like it. So if this was to break, that's better, consolidate above here, hit the weekly pivot, get back underneath and retest, you've got a problem because that's going to be a false break scenario, which is suggesting that you can trade it short, but it's also a higher low situation, which suggests that back into the range, you should be trading it long. Um, good luck with that, if that pans out like that, because that's a real, real brain teaser. And I, I really don't know, until I see the actual candle formation, I really can't call that but it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens at that point. If this doesn't happen uh, and, well, we come straight back to here, uh, I'll still be looking for probably a long at that point because we'll still be in the higher low world. And if we are, then that's exactly what I'll be looking for. But this one would be tricky, very tricky. Um, what else have I got to look at? If anything, I'm kind of getting into the same boat as you, Ash. I don't want to commentate on anything that's got pound in it at the moment because um, a lot of the people in the room will be actions to wealth account traders. And uh, as you should know by now, there will be no pound. I think the Euro's barred as well. I think the FTSE's barred. Yep. Anything else? <laughs> no, but no, I mean, it's, you know, it kind of, uh, but it, it's no bad thing. It, 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 this is generally pretty good practice, I think, for uh, for people just um, just to kind of not trade for a little while and uh, and to watch the charts. It's, 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 not, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world because it just, it reinforces it. When you get back next week, it's always a market, always a market. We don't have to trade every day to make uh, to make good money. Not compulsory, mate. That's what I say. Yeah. So have I got any interest in Aussie Kiwi? I suppose I do, looking at that. 
that kind of looks interesting. Uh, let me go to the daily chart. All right, double top, lower high, lower low, but it's not a lower low than this. So we're still really not in a position to call this short, or I'm not in a position to call this short. Really want to see that logo before that would be the case. Maybe that um, can be construed as a neckline of some sort, and we could play that as a break and retest. That's kind of the only thing I'm looking at here, I suppose. The other way to look at that would be, uh, just hang on, I'll get rid of that. Okay, that's, it's interesting because if we were now to consolidate above this line, the confluence area of trade line and or trend line really, and monthly pivot back underneath, retest it in particular if it came underneath the weekly pivot uh, so price did something like this another couple of candles or one or two candles up here get back under here and retest at that point uh, that would be interesting i'd want to take profit before these lows of course but there may well be an opportunity to trade that short maybe from here Maybe from there. Um, it's it's a wild it's a wild one, guys. I, I'm really getting way ahead of myself here. None of this could happen, you know. It's it's not a it's not a um, a clear cut scenario. So yeah, I don't even know why I'm going there, but I, I do see opportunity on Aussie N as I did yesterday. Back into here, retest, look for the short um, Aussie CAD. I've described that scenario. Aussie itself didn't really describe that scenario, did I? Um, because those of you who watched the morning show would have known that I traded this short Aussie US dollar short coming off the uh, false break of this trade line. Again, got an entry there and it stuck around for a day and a half. I closed at entry. It went to TP1 and that was all it gave. And away she went again. This is now in no man's land because we haven't really been to the top. We haven't really been to the bottom. And we're squeezing now inside these little, uh, I call, I don't know what to call them really. They're nothing. It, it's no man's land, as I said before. So there's not, no interest for me on Aussie versus US dollar. So, mate, I'm struggling uh, to find anything. Obviously, I'm not going to look at the pound or the euro because I don't see any point in that right now to yep. give an opinion on it when we're not allowed to trade it. So um, I'm, I'm just about done for the day, I think. I think mean, that's fair, mate. I think mean, that's fair. Well, we'll be back Monday. and We're both travelling Wednesday, so Wednesday might be tricky, but we'll be, we'll be back Monday. Um, let's see if we can find something to trade then if, and see if things will settle down. We'll certainly know whether Boris Johnson's had to apply for an extension or not by uh, by Monday. So well, uh, I'm that's... looking forward to Monday. I, I want to see what happens Monday. I, I think unlike most Mondays, um, I'm a bit Bob Geldofish on Mondays. Yeah. But I think this will be a different Monday. And I think we'll see um, the market clamouring over itself to take yes. a position on the pound in particular, um, maybe the FTSE for yourself, um, but also the euro. Yes. So I think there'll be action of plenty come um, open, UK open on Monday. Should be good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, okay, well, I don't know if there's any questions in the room, but if there is not, um, let us push off for the day and, and we'll be back next week. We'll push off for the week. Have a good weekend, buddy. And um, I will oh, see yeah. you. Yeah. Where did that go? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's just gone, isn't it? Wishka, Gonski. It's gone. So we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back next week, and then I oh, will see you in Bali on Wednesday. Holy dooly! Um, <laughs> yeah. No, when am I in Bali? I don't get there till actually Friday because I'm, oh, okay. I'm bunny hopping all over the place before I get okay. there. But I'll, okay. no, guys, we, there will be no show on Wednesday. That's for sure. Both Ash and I will be travelling, and I'll be travelling on Thursday as well. So I'll catch you in Bali on Friday of next week. Great. And uh, I'll see you on here on Monday. Same bad time. Same trade channel. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Yep.
Thanks, guys. See you later, buddy. See you, mate. Yep, down, Shandrew. Okay, I'll take that on board, mate. We'll see how that pans out. You're saying the pound will gap down. I'm not, not prepared to call it, I've got to say. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye.